Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Ali here, and I hope you're all having a glorious day today. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I quit alcohol for over 700 days. All right, maybe it wasn't 700 days, maybe it's been like 600 or 650, slightly under 700, I don't know, but I have significantly cut down to almost nothing my alcohol consumption in the last two years. Not that it was a lot before, but uh, in the last couple years or so, I've really made a decision to just kind of stop drinking, even if it was socially, because uh, it didn't make me feel that good. And it's something that I've been wanting to share with you guys for a while now to hear about your thoughts on this topic. And I witnessed a little interaction the other night, which kind of prompted me to do this video today, uh, which was I dragged Gab to this like Facebook digital nomad meetup thing, which was happening at a bar because all these kinds of events happen at bars. And I was waiting in line to get my soda water. And there were two guys in front of me. One was ordering a beer. The other ordered a Schweppes which I think is like gassy water, flavored water. I'm not sure, like a soft drink. They didn't know each other. And the one who ordered the beer looked over at the guy who ordered the Schweppes and said, oh, I guess uh, you're being healthy tonight, eh? And then the other guy kind of laughed awkwardly and said, yeah, whoops. Yeah, some, something like that. And it really annoyed me because uh, no one should have to justify <laughs> why they're not drinking. Okay, but I'll get back to that in, in later on in this video. I wanted to first start out telling you guys about my relationship with alcohol, and then I'll get into kind of the drink shaming and, uh, you know, drinking and dating and in, in, in social settings. So my relationship with alcohol isn't really an unhealthy one. I've, I've never really had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. I think I've had a pretty typical, normal, I don't know, maybe that's wrong to assume, like upbringing with alcohol. You know, when I was in high school, 16, like drinking some really gross beer in our friends' basements and stuff like that, and just like irresponsibly drinking to the point where you're just like super fucked up and you're just vomiting and you feel disgusting and whatever, but you're super young, so you could just bounce back like that, right? And then, you know, get into my late teens and my 20s where you know, cl clubbing was a thing and we'd go out every weekend and we'd just get wasted and guys would buy us shots, shots and we'd dance all night and we'd go out for gross food at three in the morning. And then I'd wake up at 8 a.m. to go, you know, open the store that I was working at at the mall. So there were a lot of weekends like that. Again, just like irresponsibly drinking, drinking too much, um, you know, but it wasn't an everyday kind of thing. It was like a Friday, Saturday sort of thing, right? Lots of bring your own wine dinners and stuff like that and just buy like the cheapest kind of wine. And you know, you don't know any better. You go out, you get cute with your friends, you go, you drink, 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 because that's just like what you do. But then I hit 30 and lifestyle changed a little bit. I had a business. I was working with kids with autism, like that required a lot of energy. And I just wasn't going out as much. So I wasn't drinking as much, that became more infrequent. And then the times that I would drink, oh, like the recovery time would just be longer. And you know, at some point I was like, Mah, this like, I don't feel that great anymore. So I won't drink as much, you know, to the point of like blackout or anything like that. Like, that's just not fun, you know? Never uh, really felt good in my body. And then, um, the year that I moved to the Auberge uh, with Gab, that region is particularly known for, you know, wine and food, but like good quality wine. So for that first year at the Auberge, I was drinking a lot more because the vibe was just like that. It was such a relaxed vibe and we started drinking like quality alcohol. So, you know, I wouldn't be as hungover, but, um, I would still drink and we would, you know, eat good food and good meals, good conversations. It was more like a elevated sort of leveling up of, of consuming alcohol. And 
I mean, that's just like auberge vibes. It's like super chill and everyone just enjoys life and stuff. So you're just chilling around the campfire. You're enjoying a nice glass of wine, which is two glasses of wine. Like it's just, it's a vibe. So after about a year though, I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore because also working at the auberge, it's like, you need to be freaking on, you know, and you need energy. And I was just not feeling good in my body, you know? So I was like, ah, I'm just going to cut back. I'm not going to drink. And then all of a sudden that turned into not really drinking ever. And it wasn't really that hard for me to cut back because again, I never had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. Um, so it was pretty easy to just not do it anymore. And now when I drink, it's very intentional. So I will still drink on occasion. I think maybe I have like, I don't know, three or four glasses of something a month. Um, and I enjoy it, you know, cause now when I drink, I drink with intention and I want to enjoy what I'm drinking and not drink just for the sake of like drinking, you know? So I'm excited. We're going out for really good Italian food. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get myself a really nice, like full bodied glass of red wine, you know, or like I'm going to enjoy a cocktail tonight or whatever, but it's like very, um, sporadic and just, yeah. And I don't over consume. I have maybe one drink, but I really enjoy it. I, I enjoy drinking with intention or whatever, however you want, want to call it, which brings me to the thing that annoys me, which is actually, let me backtrack for a sec. So when I, I mean, I, we still go to bars and stuff now, but for mostly I order soda water and I never used to order soda water before. I used to hate drinking soda water. Gassy water is just like, not for me, but now it is. And I get it with lime. So, you know, it tastes like a little bit fun because, you know, I also feel bad for the establishment just going there and consuming regular water. So, you know, I have to pay for something, but yeah, I get soda water now. And uh, Gab actually too, he, he's cut significantly cut down his alcohol consumption. Um, I think I have a good influence on that. Anyways. So the thing that annoys me is the drink shaming. Okay. Because I find that when I really decided to start saying no, like, Oh, do you want a glass of wine? No, no, I'm good. No, no. People would just question me all the time. And it was so annoying. Like there was something wrong with me. Like, Oh, do you want a glass of wine? No, no, I'm good. Really? Are you okay? You're not drinking. Why are you not drinking? It's like, do am I like, do I need to be sad or depressed or something going on in my life where I have to not be drinking. Like, do we need to make this a big deal? Can't you just say, okay, no problem. And go to the next person. Why make a comment, <clears throat> you know, or like in celebration mode, you know, like, oh, let's celebrate. Okay. But I'm not drinking. Oh, come on. Just like one, come on, just have one drink. No, no, no. It's like, no, why are you pressuring me? Just, just let it go. Um, I remember once I, I, I walked in on a dinner party that was happening and I came in late. I wasn't like a part of the dinner party. It was like living in my old apartment and I came in and everyone was finishing up dinner, but they were still drinking and I started making tea and someone made a comment like, Oh, why don't you have a glass of wine? Why are you making tea? Like it's Friday night or something. And I was like, I just, I want tea. Like, I don't feel like drinking, you know? And there was a little bit of a like, Oh, come on. Nah, nah, nah. And I was just like, oh my God, let's, first of all, you don't know what people's stories are. So the example that I gave the other night where I saw those two gentlemen at the bar and he said, oh, I guess you're being healthy tonight. Maybe that guy's a recovering alcoholic. Maybe his parents are alcoholics and got into some kind of ridiculous drunk driving accident. And he's sworn off drinking alcohol for the rest of his life. Like you don't know. So instead of making some kind of awkward comment about why someone's not drinking, just don't say anything at all. Okay. So if you're listening to this and if you have a tendency to want to uh, pressure people to drink with you or think it's weird that people don't drink if they're at a bar, like it's none of your business. It's a personal choice. Just let them be. They'll drink if they want to drink. If you want to drink and you feel weird drinking by yourself because the person you're with decided to order a soda water, like that's on you but just like enjoy your drink and without feeling weird that the other person's not drinking. So anyways, that's my two cents on that. The next thing I want to get into is drinking and dating culture. Okay. Because 
not drinking has kind of affected my dating culture, my dating life a little bit. Um, so when I was single and ready to mingle and dating and having a lot of fun, I would go out for drinks. Like, that's just what you do. You have a date, you're like, let's go here, let's go to this nice bar, let's grab a drink, and then you get all cute, you go to the bar, it's all dark, you're sitting at the bar, you order a drink, you feel all sexy, you get to know each other, you have one drink, second drink, you're a little bit more flirty, you know, you get that liquid courage and everything. And I mean, I would never get like blackout drunk on a date, but I would have like maybe three to four drinks, you know, sparsed out over a long period of time. So I was definitely tipsy, you know, and obviously that made the night more kind of fun and exciting and just, I don't know, you know, cause that, that's just like what it was. And when I met Gab and we started going out on dates with girls together, that's what we would do too. We would go to a nice restaurant or a bar and we would get a bottle of wine or two and cocktails and food and this and that. And it would make the night really expensive, first of all. And, you know, I would never feel good the next day, ever. So we would, you know, go through the night, we would have our fun, whatever, and it would take me days to recover, not just um, from the alcohol, but also like the lack of sleep, the everything, it would just like really get to my head and I just didn't feel good at all. And I always felt though that I needed a little bit of liquid courage. Like he would always say like, why, why do you have to drink? I'd be like, I need a drink or two before we like go into this, just so I feel a little bit relaxed because when like I'm, I'm shy, you know, and I'm shy and awkward. So if I don't have a little bit of liquid courage, I might not be as direct or flirty or make take me a little bit longer to get more comfortable, especially in like a threesome kind of situation. And so we decided this year, actually, that we were going to change the way we did things. So when we were in Mexico, you know, we wanted to go out on a few dates, but there were a few things that we were considering. First of all, we started eating better, you know, and so we didn't enjoy going out to the restaurant as much because A, we didn't want to spend the money, and two, we just like, I cook really well and we eat super well at home, so like, let's just enjoy a nice meal at home. And we also didn't want to like go to a bar and just like get drinks all night and just get drunk because, you know, we just, we're at a point where we didn't want to feel like that anymore. So we said, you know what, why don't we try something different and invite the person over for dinner, which was kind of a big step because in my mind, I was like, what kind of girl is going to want to come to a couple's house for the first meet? Like that's kind of risky, but apparently, you know, people don't mind. So we'd invite someone over for dinner. She would accept and I wouldn't have any alcohol at the house. So I made dinner though, you know, and we had like a vibe and stuff, but just no alcohol. And it was fun, you know, but it was, it was definitely different because again, I was a bit more shy, but more closed off. And I mean, I was still learning how to navigate that situation without the influence of alcohol. Cause like, what do you do at some point? You know, do you casually ask like, so would you like to spend the evening? And like, how do you make the move? You know, when there's no like juices and alcohol flowing and everyone's feeling really nice. Like it was awkward, still fun. Like it was, it was fine, but it was just different, you know? Um, so yeah. And you know, moving forward, definitely uh, still into doing that, as in like not drinking as much as I used to, um, but definitely changed the dating game. And it made me also think of, you know, a friend of mine who is single and she also has recently decided to cut alcohol out for health reasons or like significantly decrease. She'll still enjoy like a glass here and there, but really like decrease the amount significantly from what she was consuming before. And she will tell me, you know, I went to a bar the other night and you know, she's single. She often goes out to, to places by herself, which I love by the way. 
um, just to kind of like get out there and, you know, cause she's like, if I want to meet people, like, what am I going to do? Like, I need to go out of my house. So she'll go to the local bar or whatever. And, you know, she's very friendly and stuff. So she makes friends with the bartender and she sits and she has a drink because again, she's like, what else am I going to do to how to meet people? And it sucks that, you know, meeting people nowadays is so associated with like going to the bar and having a drink. I mean, it's always kind of been like that, but yeah, she's right. Like, where will you meet people if you don't go out and socialize and drink? I mean, yeah, you could go to the, I don't know, more other social settings like the gym or whatever, but let's be honest. <laughs> you don't really meet that many people when you go to the gym and do you go to the gym with intention of meeting people or you go to the gym with intention of like exercising for yourself and so on and if you're lucky you might be you know you might bump into someone serendipitously and fall in love and whatever but or make friends you know but yeah i think in montreal i have to confirm this information but there was some kind of talk or actual opening of a dry bar so it was like mocktails, you know, mocktail bar for people who didn't want to drink. And I don't know if it exists. I don't know if it still exists or if it ever even existed, but I'm sure there are places like that exist in the world. But are they fun? Did you guys ever go to one of those? I'd love to know. I'd love to know. And yeah, speaking of mocktails, not a fan of mocktails at all. I don't feel like... First of all, it's like full of juice and sugar. They just like bloat me. They're just not good. I, I'm really not into them. And I don't feel like I need a mocktail to make me think that I'm having a drink or whatever. But you know, some people do. Like I know a lot of people now who drink non-alcoholic beer who are trying to cut down off regular alcohol and it really, really helps them. And I guess I, I, I'm, I'm, like really happy about that fact, but I don't understand it because I never had a, uh, that thirst for alcohol, you know? But I think it's really great that they have those options for people to uh, consume, to help with that. Gab also, he drinks non-alcoholic beer sometimes. So yeah, anyways, um, not really sure where I'm going with this now, but it was basically just to share with you guys, you know, what alcohol, the relationship I've had with alcohol, um, you know, how I've been off alcohol totally almost for the last two years or so. Uh, I don't crave it. I don't miss it. Again, I never really had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol, so it's not something I ever really craved. Um, I'd say my unhealthy relationship is more with food. I'll definitely crave a big bag of chips before I crave a beer or a glass of wine or anything else. <laughs> um, and yes, and also to just remind you to think twice before you make a comment to someone about why they're not drinking. Okay. Don't make it a thing. And if anything, support them. Okay. Because sometimes ooh, loud sirens, sorry guys. Sometimes it's really hard. It, ah, they're throwing me off. All right. Sometimes it can be really hard for someone to say no to alcohol. So an example, again, that interaction that I witnessed at the bar the other night, um, maybe that guy, again, he's a recovering alcoholic and it took everything in his body to grab that Schweppes and not a beer. And then there's someone at the bar making a comment about him drinking healthy. Um, so just don't make it a thing. All right. And you know, sober dating. I know that's a thing. I'm sure. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about sober dating. Um, I'd love to hear more about it and you know what your thoughts are on uh, sober dating and how we can kind of get away from you know, the alcohol and dating culture and meeting people and things like that and, and sort of make it okay not to drink all the time or sometimes. Anyways, that's it. Thank you for listening. If you guys want to know different ways how to support me, you can check out the links below this video. And uh, merci tout le monde. Je vous aime tous. Ciao.